Hi, this is Mr. Phillips, and I'd like to talk you through the writing process of the Two Rocks Practice CER for our science class. When you get a CER, one of the things you need to do is make sure you look at the directions. So we have our directions. Make sure you look at any background information that's given to you. So here we have some background information. And then you want to make sure that you know what the question is that's being asked of you that you're writing about. The next step is to look at your data. So we have our data table here. And to look at your scientific principles. And once you look at all that information, you have to start thinking about, okay, what information do I need to answer my question? So our background information says, Mr. Phillips found two rocks and would like to figure out if they are the same type of rock or different types of rocks. Below is a table with some information about the rocks and scientific principles you may use to complete your statements of claim, evidence, and reasoning. The question I'm supposed to answer is, are rock one and rock two the same type of rock? Well, to figure that out, I need to look at some of my information. So information I'm looking for would be things that would be considered to be physical properties. Um, mass and color are not physical properties. They are used to help figure out, as far as colors, what some rocks are, but they're not that useful overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike through them so I can still see them, but realize they're not the best information. Hardness, density, and melting point are all physical properties. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to highlight those. So that way, I'm like, that's important information. I need to look at it. And then I have my two rocks, rocks one, two, and I'm going to highlight those two as well. All right. So my next step is to say, all right, so I have hardness, I have density, and I have melting point. So I want to look through my scientific principles and try to figure out, do any of those line up with this information? And if so, I want to keep them. If the scientific principles don't have anything to do with this information, I'm going to strike through them and just not look at them. All right? So the first scientific principle, a property such as density, which is mass divided by volume, is a unique characteristic that helps identify a substance and distinguish one substance from another. Well, it has the word density in it, so I would say that's an important one because I have density up here, so I'm going to keep this one. And not only am I going to keep it, but I'm also going to bold it, and I am going to highlight the whole thing, because that's a keeper. I want to use that one later. A substance is made of only one type of material, atoms or molecules, all the way through. Nope, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Strike through it. A mixture is made of more than one substance, or more than one type of atom or molecule. That really doesn't do it for me, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Solubility. We haven't talked about solubility, so I'm going to get rid of that one, too. That one doesn't have anything to do with what my data supports. Hardness and melting point. Ooh, those look like key points. Let me check that out. So hardness and melting point, if I look above, we have melting point and hardness. So that is a keeper. Talks about both of those. So I'm going to highlight this and bold it because I want to make sure it stands out. So I'm keeping those. Number six, properties of a given substance are the same regardless of the amount, mass, and or volume of the substance. Now this one is one that I would say you can use it if you want to. If you use it properly, it won't hurt you. But you don't necessarily have to do it. So for me, I don't know why I titled it this, but I call this purple fluff. It's useful, but optional. Meaning that I can add it in, but if I don't add it in, I can still get a great grade. All right? Because I do have information, um, make that a light purple. I'm not going to bold it. I do have information up here that talks about the mass. The masses are the same here. But the problem with that is the mass doesn't really tell me anything other than how much stuff I have, how much matter is there. It doesn't tell me if it's the same amount or if it's or if it's the same rock or not the same rock. So for example, if I had a cup of water versus a gallon of water, I just know I have water because it looks like water, it tastes like water, but I don't really know for sure that it's water. So I want to be careful. I might have two clear liquids that are different and they're not both water. I don't know. 
Um, so maybe I'm thinking it's water, but it's not really water. So the mass doesn't really do a whole lot. It just tells me how much I have. All right. Um, so that's why I call this purple fluff. And if I want to distinguish that mass doesn't really mean a whole lot, I can put that in. All right. So what I did was to save a little bit of time in this video is I have these pre-written answers for us. And so the claim, the question that's being asked is my, that I answer is my claim. So the question being asked is, are rock one and rock two the same type of rock? Well, based on this information, I would say they have different hardnesses, different densities, and different melting points. So I would say rock one and rock two are not the same type of rock. So here is my question. Here is my claim. Rock one and rock two are different types of rock because they have different physical properties, meaning different hardness, different density, and different melting points. If I were just to say rock one and rock two are different types of rock, period, so just this part, that'd be an excellent answer, and that would get me a proficient. By adding this little bit of extra on the end here, that leads me into the development of my thought process for the rest of my writing. That bumps me up to an advanced. So once I have this claim, what I like to do is I like to highlight my claim, copy it, and then I paste it under the evidence. And then I go down here and I paste it under the reasoning once and twice. Okay, so that's what I like to do. And in fact, I'm going to make this the same color blue because it's almost identical to my claim. All right. Now, I'm going to go back up and now I have to list my evidence. And if you remember, I want to put my, oops, sorry, I'm scrolling around here too much. I want to put my claim in here because when I'm writing my evidence, I want to make sure I know what I'm writing towards so I don't get off track. So the three things I want to identify here are the hardness, the density, and the melting point. And the way I do this is I like to think of this as my pre-writing because once I get my pre-writing down for my claim and my evidence, putting together the reasoning statement is pretty easy because it's a lot of copy and paste. All right. So I'm going to start out and make my first sentence the same for all of them. So rock one and rock two are different types of rock because they have different physical properties. And then in parentheses, I put hardness. I copy that sentence. And I'm going to paste it down here. And then all I did was change the word density. I copy and paste it down here again. And this time, all I did was change it to melting points. So I try to keep things as easy as I can. And then I have my second sentence. Rock 1 has a hardness of 7, and Rock 2 has a hardness of 4. So I got this data right off the data table. I'm not going to scroll up because I don't want you getting tired of me scrolling around. And then the second one, I'm focusing on the density. So Rock 1 has a density of... 6.25 grams per cubic centimeter, and rock 2 has a density of 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. Now remember, to make this little 3 on your Chromebook, I believe you hit Control and then the period, and that will put it up there for you as a superscript. All right? And once you're done typing it, then hit Control period again, and then it will put it back to normal size. And then the third point I want to make is the part about the melting points. So then I just list my data. Rock 1 has a melting point of 4,500 degrees Celsius. Rock 2 has a melting point of 2,600, or I'm sorry, 2,576 degrees Celsius. So once I have my evidence and I have my claim, I just have to do my reasoning statement. And we use the same format for the reasoning each time. Now this time, though, if I look back up above for my scientific principles, I'm going to use two scientific principles for sure. Now to get a proficient, I need to use both of these scientific principles, and I have to have them well described, okay? And then um, if I add that little extra, I can bump it up to advanced, but if I do a really good job of explaining this, I will also be able to get advanced. If I only use one of these scientific principles, if I do a really, really good job, I can still get a proficient, but it'll be a low-end proficient, okay? And to get the proficient, you would have to use this one, the number five because it has two parts to it. So then you have two out of the three parts of information. If you just use this one, you'd probably still be at a developing. Okay? All right. So with that, I'm going to go down to my reasoning statement. I've got my claim posted in here already. And I decided to start out with scientific principle number one. And remember, you want to start out by stating it is a scientific principle and make sure you include the number in front of it. If you don't include that, you won't get the proficient that you want. So all I did was I stated scientific principle number one states that, 
And then I just copied and pasted the rest of this from above. And I changed the color and made it nice and bold so you guys could see it easily. Then I go up above to my evidence. I'm like, oh, okay. So which am I, evidence am I looking for? It's like density. All right. So I scroll up. I get my density evidence and I paste it right there. And I've just completed this first part. And now I have a rock solid, no pun intended, developing. I've got some of the information, but not all the information I need. Now, for the next part, I change it up at the beginning of it a little bit, and instead of typing out scientific principle number one, I just said SP5. So I'm letting you abbreviate this SP for scientific principle 5, that's the number of the scientific principle, states, and then I just copied and pasted this part from above. And then I bolded it and changed the color to make it look nice for you. All right. So then I go up above and look for my evidence that covers both hardness and melting points. All right. And so I have this color coded. So the first part here is on hardness. So right here you can see where I pasted that in there. And the second bit of evidence is the melting points. So by making sure that I have both scientific principles represented and all three pieces of evidence represented and very well written out so it's obvious as to exactly what's going on, I now have an advanced. If I wanted to add that purple fluff in here, SP scientific principle number six, I could add that in just to completely drive it home the fact that I realized that the mass does not matter. And so what I did was I changed this one up a little bit and I said the mass of the two rocks are the same, but that doesn't matter because SP6 states that properties of given substance are the same regardless of the amount, mass, and or volume of the substance. The two rocks have the same amount of matter in them, but that doesn't help me identify them. So again, I'm just saying, yes, this data was given. I'm acknowledging that it's given, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot. It just means they're the same amount of material. So it doesn't help me identify it or not identify it. Just says, this is what I have. So my final part of this is my wrap-up statement or my therefore statement. So I literally just write the word therefore comma, and I paste my claim back in there, and I'm officially done. With the idea that I have spell checked things. So if you haven't spell checked things, proofread things, make sure you have all your things labeled, make sure you do that. Because for example, if I have my evidence here, and I don't have labels on it, it doesn't do me any good. So that's going to get me downgraded. All right. If I don't have labels for the hardness, it doesn't have a label. It's just a number. But if I don't have labels of, for density, again, I won't be at a level of proficient because I won't know what this number means. All right, so make sure you spell check things and make sure you, your labels are done correctly. And that's all I have. Thank you.